Hey everyone, it's Rise School 007 and we are finally back with another video after six weeks, I think. So this right here is the X-Way X1 Pro Riot electric skateboard. It is made by X-Way and is a belt driven skateboard. Now what that basically means is that when I punch this throttle, these belts, they move. And basically it is almost instant acceleration. So basically, I push this, it goes. Pretty cool. Now with the X-Way X1 Pro Riot, the name's really long. With the skateboard, there is the option to have hub motors. Now what hub motors basically are, is you take this big motor right here, and instead of having a belt, you just directly connect it to the wheel. So you get not really instant acceleration, you would think there'd be instant acceleration, but it's more of a slow, rise to speed but it does have a higher top speed than this one so with both options you kind of trade off with like a really fast start but slower top speed or a really slow start with you know a higher top speed personally i think belt drivens are better because i like that instant acceleration to go really fast but people could like hub motors too so these are brushless motors and they can reach speeds of 30 miles per hour which i have no idea how many rpms that is for these things but it can reach 30 miles per hour or above. I've only ever reached probably around 27 miles per hour, but still, that's pretty close. The belt driven motors are actually extremely easy to get to. All you literally have to do is just loosen these bolts and the whole thing comes off. It makes it really easy because little tiny pebbles, probably little tiny pebbles like that where you can barely even see it on screen, you probably can't, but it's super easy to get them out. You just basically take a bolt and fish them out. All right, we are back at my house and we have the board right here and I'm gonna do a little tear down cleaning. Hold on, hold on, one sec. Okay. Okay, so here we have the board. You can see after riding it, it gets, it gets pretty dirty. <laughs> so, basically all you need to do is grab a paper towel or anything in general that can get wet and wipe something off. Now, of course, you don't want to get anything near the wheels because that'll mess you up. Let me get a few pa wet paper towels and I'll be right back. Okay, back with paper towels. Basically, all you're gonna do is just wipe the whole board down. It's pretty self-explanatory. Here we go. I mean, it looks decent compared to what it was. And all you need is this T-tool. Pretty simple. Starting off with the front ones. Pretty simple. Just take the tool, make sure the one fits, and then lefty, loosey. And basically just remove them all. Front ones, you have to spend a lot more because they have a lot more bolt. But you can see it's pretty simple. And there's a little washer and another washer, and you're pretty much good. Now, Take one of your wet sponges. You can basically sit here and just do this. Wipe it all down, clean it all off. Don't really want to touch the bearings to get water in them, even though they are sealed. You don't really want to get in there. Basically, you're just cleaning off the dirt. You're not really actually cleaning it. But once they are all cleaned, like that, I mean, it, it's as clean as it's gonna get. These are old. It's a pretty old, these have like 300, 400 miles on them. Grab some good old W40. This probably isn't the best to use. Grab. Paper towel. <laughs> this is probably like the stupidest method to do. Spray it in there a little, and then just put it on the axle. <laughs> that's, that's that's basically it. A little bit more. Put it in there. Now, if you are actually to do this, I wouldn't recommend using WD-40. I probably recommend using actual grease that is meant for skateboards, not this. There, there probably is stuff out there that is actually meant for this, but we don't have any of that. This is our next best option. You put the washer on first, then your wheel, twist them on like that. Now it's on, take your other bearing, or your washer, put that washer on, take your bolt, get hand screwed on, or you could do it all the way. Now I'm gonna do it on this side real fast. And then I'll show you the back ones too, because the back ones are a little bit more difficult. And 
There we go. Both reinstalled, all clean, greased up with WD-40. Look, the WD-40 probably isn't the best thing to use, but for most people who have this thing, they probably aren't gonna have some special grease, maybe, maybe unless they really are into it. But for most people, the average person, they probably aren't gonna have that special grease. They're probably gonna have WD-40 laying around. So, you know, it works, it works fine. You just gotta clean it a little bit more. Okay, now for the back ones, which are actually the motors. <laughs> These you have to be a little bit more careful with. They're a little bit harder. It's also a lot easier to take these bolts off than the others. Now, after you take your bolt, your washer, I don't even know if this is an actual washer, but after you take that stuff off, you just remove the wheel like normal, and then you have your other washer in the back. Then you just go through and clean the wheel like usual. Drain it off. Clean wheel, not really. Probably still is really gross, but you got a looking good wheel now there is another part to this as it has the motor is right there what you basically have to do is pull it off twist pull it twist pull it twist you basically just weave the belt off which is up here which if you can see what i'm doing basically just popping it off completely all the way and there goes the washer you gotta put that there this is basically the, the motor you see how dirty these things get but yeah I cleaned this about two days ago. Pretty, pretty cool. There you go, you can see all the belt motor. This is also a good way to check if you have any pebbles in your teeth or in the belt or the motor teeth down there too. Pretty simple, pretty easy way to get everything off. Cleaning this is basically the same. Clean it all off. Wow, what a difference. But you probably should also clean back here as well. Basically, it's just all about cleaning and maintaining. Don't know if you have to do this with hub motors, that's the thing. I think this is mainly just for belts, which could be an advantage to hub motors for not having to do all of this. And there you go. That's basically the entire motor assembly taken apart. I'm gonna put it back together, basically in reverse, just really fast. There you go, all back together. Now I'm gonna do the other side again, but really fast. All done, cleaning the entire thing and all it took me about 30 minutes. It probably would have taken me 20-ish, maybe 15 if I wasn't, you know, filming. That is a pretty much complete teardown of this. You could go deeper into this. All you need to do is grab Allen wrenches and there are bolts all along this. And that basically takes off this shield right here. But there are three also behind this motor mount here. So all you have to do is unscrew those and you can take this whole casing off which basically protects the motor and anything else that's inside there that you need to take off. Basically, you can take this entire thing off and just leave the axle just like in the front. Pretty cool. All right, back to you. Now the battery on this board can actually get you somewhere about 16 miles away. Now, of course, that depends on which mode you're in. Like, for example, if you are in mode two, you could probably reach 16, maybe even more. But if you're in mode four, going full speed, turbo, everything, you're probably only gonna get like 10 miles. I also feel when the battery gets to like low percentages or low volts, it doesn't really know what percentage it's at anymore. It sort of just makes its best, be makes its best guess. But basically, if you're riding and it says like 20% left, if you hop off, let it sit, it'll jump back up to like 35% and then you'll have 35% left. Yeah, uh, batteries. Now the battery is beefy. The entire board itself is the battery. The battery is inside the board. They're stacked all throughout this board in a, I wanna say series, but it's probably wrong. And then you got your controls back here and this all gets really warm and stuff. Now, since the battery is built into the board, it kinda takes away the advantage of swapping a battery out or doing anything because if you need to change your battery, you basically have to change the entire deck, which that kind of sucks, but 16 mile range, like that's pretty good. Regardless, if your battery does die and it won't charge anymore, whatever, you basically get an entirely new board, which, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Of course, one massive con with this board is the charging time. Charging time for this thing is two hours and 45 minutes, which two hours and 45 minutes is quite a bit of time if 
you say non-COVID time, non-corona, you show up, you're on a long ride, you show up to like a coffee shop or something, you know, you gotta stop to get a quick break, maybe charge the board along the way. Nobody's gonna be sitting at a coffee shop for like two hours. So X-Way went and of course, you make a problem, you sell a solution. They made a charger brick thing that can charge the board in under an hour. Now, that brick itself is $100. Who's gonna spend $100? I don't know, probably me, but this board, this board, you wanna, you wanna ride it as much as you can. Now the battery and deck and everything weighs about 16 pounds, which is not bad at all for the specs it has and for it being an electric skateboard with, you know, a massive battery, motors, everything. Anyways, now for the different modes and the smartphone app. All right, so the remote, the remote, it, whoops, the remote itself is pretty smart. So it uses Bluetooth signal to communicate with the board which is pretty nice, unless it uses Wi-Fi. But the remote has four modes. Now the first mode, which is mode one, or gear one, it's definitely meant for being close next to people, like trying to be careful, or maybe you're learning it for the first time. It's basically really slow. So if I kick it into gear, it's max speed right now. It's going around five miles per hour. So yeah, that's definitely for, you're just maybe public transport, you're going really slow, I don't know. Second mode. It's a little bit faster. It's probably more for, I don't know, more public transport, going a little bit faster. It basically dips you more into the speed if you want to get more used to the board. It goes around 11, 10 miles per hour. Third mode is probably mainly for cruising and relaxing and riding around. I like this one, especially that this one is like the first mode that introduces cruise control, which all you have to do is double tap the button and you stay at that speed and it continues going. But at mode three, it goes 18, 17 miles per hour. And of course the last mode, mode four, gear four, is like the top one where it basically can take you up to all the way to 30. If you turn turbo on, it'll go even faster. Mode four, gear four, about 24 there, but that's also because I'm at 75%. With the app, you can customize the board how you like. I personally like race mode as the torque when this thing takes off is almost enough to knock you off your feet. There's also turbo mode, but it doesn't really seem to do much, honestly, to my board for some reason. It maybe might make it go a little bit faster, but it's not that noticeable. Of course, with each mode, in each different mode, of course, it will decrease your range more and more. With mode one, you'll probably get around 20 miles, if I'm being honest. But sure, you're going 20 miles, but you're going five miles per hour. That's gonna take you a very long time to get there. And of course, with the mode four, max mode, whatever, you get about like 10. And the coolest thing about the app is that you can connect it to the board, tracks everything you've done. From the miles you've gone to the amount of carbon emissions you've saved by riding the board, there's of course danger as it is a super fast skateboard that could actually throw you off if it really wanted to. You know, warning to people out there, if you get a skateboard, any electric skateboard in general, do not disconnect the remote while riding. Make sure that you have enough battery charge on your remote so that it does not die while you are riding. Because if your remote disconnects or something happens or if you connect your phone to the board while you're riding, the wheels will lock up and it will throw you off. Which, you know, that's that's pretty, that's pretty cool. But other than that, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I mean, reaching car speeds on a skateboard, that's pretty cool. Now, as I've done before, I'm going to take you on a ride on the electric skateboard, give you like a tour about how the skateboard really is maybe range test as well, of just basically how far you can really go with a skateboard and what a normal day with a skateboard will be like. Okay, so today I'm basically taking you on a ride of what you pretty much averagely do on the board, uh, basically COVID style. For this trip, I'm basically gonna ride all the way down to the grocery store, ride all the way back down, recharge the battery a little, then ride over, get the sandwiches, and ride all the way back home, and it's just basically gonna show you how far and what you can really do with this board. All right, so it's currently raining while I am going, and I, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. So yeah, that's basically everything I needed. And I have the board down there underneath. Fits pretty much perfectly. Under there, turn the remote so that you don't accidentally forget while well, it's down there.
Anyways, if you like this video, please comment down below, like, share, d d do something, please. And if you really, really like this video, please make sure to subscribe as it supports me and boosts my channel up. And stay tuned for more content like this. Peace.